What's up guys, my name is Brandon and you just got your brand new 2020 iPad Pro. You unboxed it, you went through the initial setup process and now you may be wondering, what can I do next? What can I do to take full advantage of all the amazing features on this beast of a tablet? So in this video, I wanna share the first 15 things you should do on your brand new 2020 iPad Pro. These are gonna be tips, tricks, and just essential things that you need to know about the iPad Pro. And if you guys find any of these tips useful throughout this video, I would appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. The first thing is to learn the gestures if you are not familiar already. There are tons of gestures that you can do on the iPad Pro for multitasking, for just getting in and out of windows, just a lot of things to make life easier and you need to know these. So a lot of the basic ones like swiping up to go home and things like that, pulling down the control center, a lot of these are really well known. But some of the things that you may not know you could do are if you use four fingers, a four finger pinch will bring up multitasking just like so. It can also take you home if you're inside of an application, just use four fingers and pinch in like that. Basically, you could just have to pinch in all the way like that to bring up the multitasking view. Also, if you have an Apple Pencil, there's a very easy way to take a screenshot. So when you have the pencil in your hand, just swipe up from the bottom left-hand corner and it will take a screenshot for you just by doing that simple gesture. And then you can annotate on it and do everything very simply. Another cool gesture you guys can take advantage of is a pinch on the keyboard to get a floating keyboard that you can move all around the screen. So as you guys know, especially if you have a 12.9 inch, it can be kind of annoying to have to sit there and type. And it's kind of, you know, it takes a while to sit there and type a lot of sentences on such a big keyboard, but this makes it small like your iPhone so you can type very fast and just pinch out to bring it back to normal size. And speaking of typing and texting, there's also another gesture that will allow you to copy and paste quickly. And for this, you just use three fingers while you have something selected and pinch in and it will copy. Sometimes it will be a little bit finicky and go down the page, but as you can see, copy. And then if we want to paste that, you just pinch out with three fingers and it will paste it just like so. That comes in handy a lot once you get the hang of it. And to add on to that, you could also undo and redo with three fingers by simply swiping right or swiping left. As you can see, undo, swipe three fingers to the right, that's a redo. So just a lot of simple gestures that could take a while to get used to, but definitely come in handy when it comes to text editing. The next thing you guys need to do is take advantage of slide over and split view for great multitasking. So for this, if you have an application open, let's just say we have Safari open and then we bring up our dock just like so. If you wanna have another app open at the same time, we simply take it up and drag it over to the side right here of the screen and we have two apps side by side. You could change the size of them if you want to, just like so. You can also have multiple applications open in the slide over view right there. So if we take our Twitter right here and put it on top of this as well, you can see we have multiple applications open right there. If we go ahead and swipe from the top home bar right there and just kind of bring it over like this, you can go in and out of different applications over here in this view, which once again, is just great for multitasking. Now, another cool thing about split view is that you can have two instances of the exact same application opened at once. So let's just use, let's say Safari for instance. Let's just say we wanted to have two windows of Safari side by side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on a link right here and just kind of bring it over like this. And as you can see, we have two different versions of Safari opened at once. And we can go ahead and interact with each one of them like they're two separate applications. And if we go back to the home screen and go to the icon of the application that we have two instances open up, you can see we get a new menu item called show all windows, and it will show you all of the instances you currently have opened of Safari or whatever the app may be. So just very useful tips there for multitasking on your iPad. Now, the next thing you guys wanna do is set up Face ID if you did not do this in the initial setup process. So for this, just go to your settings and go to Face ID and passcode. So once you're in here, you will want to go ahead and set up Face ID if you did not do so already. You will have to take two scans of your face. You can also set up an alternate appearance if you want to. So if you wear glasses or you know a wig or whatever the case may be, you may wanna set that up. You should also have both of these options selected right here, require attention for Face ID and attention aware features. And you can read about those if you want to. Also, you can go ahead and select what you want to be selected down here as far as allowing access to when locked. So these are things you can access from the lock screen without putting in your face ID or passcode. And I would also highly recommend having password autofill enabled at all times. That way you can have your passwords filled in just by scanning your face. It makes the whole process of using passwords in Safari so much easier. It's like your own 
personal password manager. The next thing you guys wanna do is hook up a Bluetooth mouse or a USB mouse if you have an adapter like I do here and take advantage of true mouse and trackpad support, which was just added in the latest iPadOS release, iPadOS 13.4. So I don't have a Bluetooth mouse around me right now, but I do have a USB mouse and I have a little USB-C to USB-A adapter right here. I can just plug this into the bottom of the iPad and I have this MX Performance mouse that I can use right here. And you can see on the screen, I do have full mouse support. You can see when you go ahead and scroll over applications on the home screen, they have this little animation to indicate that you are on them. Also, when you're inside of an application, you can pull up the dock by simply taking your mouse down to the bottom right here. And if you wanna go home, you can just keep on dragging all the way down past when you pull up the dock and it will take you home. You can go ahead and click on the battery percentage up on the top right that will bring down your control center. You can bring down your notification center by simply dragging from the top left corner. And if you go into your settings, you can see you have a menu option here in settings general called trackpad and mouse. And from here, you can change the tracking speed if you want natural scrolling or not. Also your secondary click, you can have that selected to left or right. And when you do a secondary click, you can see right here, it will bring up the haptic touch or 3D touch menu right there, which is really convenient. And if you have a magic trackpad, you get even more features and exclusive gestures than if you had a magic mouse or a USB mouse or any type of mouse. So if we go to our settings here, I have the magic trackpad two right here and I've not connected it yet, but if we go to our settings, Bluetooth, you will see it down here, Magic Trackpad 2. And once it's connected, we can go ahead and use our cursor right here and it acts just like a mouse. But once again, we do have more exclusive features on here. So we could do the three finger swipe up to go home. And if we keep swiping up, you can see it brings us to our multitasking view right there. We can also quickly go in and out of applications using a three finger swipe over to the left and the right. And it will take us into multiple applications whenever we have open, which is really convenient. Also in Safari, we could do the same with going back and forth on web pages with two fingers. And if we go to our settings, general trackpad, you can see we have just a couple more options right here than we did with the mouse. Also, if we go to settings, accessibility, and then go to pointer control right here, you could change a lot of things. So you can increase the contrast, automatically hide pointer. You can set the amount of time that the pointer hides. You could change the color. So if you wanted to change this to like green, you can see it changes the pointer color. You can also change the stroke size if you want to. I like having no color on this. I think it looks a little bit cleaner. You could change the pointer size. So if you wanted it bigger, you could do so just like that. You have pointer animations, trackpad inertia, and also your scrolling speed right there. So just a lot of things you should go ahead and consider and just take a look at if you have a trackpad or a mouse. And especially if you combine this with a keyboard, it just makes this pretty much a laptop. I mean, it's a great laptop replacement if you take full advantage of these features, once again, that were just introduced with iPadOS. 13.4. The next thing you guys should do is go ahead and configure your display settings. So if we go into our settings right here and then go to display and brightness, there are a lot of things that we can change right here. So first of all, we do have dark mode with iOS 13 and iPadOS 13. I like having this on automatic so it changes when the sun goes down and changes back to light when the sun comes up. But for this video, it's easier to see everything in light mode. So I'm going to keep it on light. You can also change if you want to have a custom schedule for light and dark mode, you can go ahead and do that. You have true tone, you have night shift, you have auto lock, which I like keeping on never just because I usually always remember to lock my iPad, especially if you have the case that locks it automatically. There's really no point in having auto lock on just because sometimes if you're like reading a long article, it will just lock on you and that can get annoying. Even when it dims before it locks, it does get quite annoying. So I like having that on never. And then here's the feature I talked about. If you have the iPad cover, the smart folio cover, I would recommend having that on that way every time you close the case it locks your iPad and when you open the case it unlocks your iPad and then also if we go to our settings and go to accessibility display and text size there are some things in here you want to look at but the main thing is auto brightness I like having auto brightness disabled but some of you may prefer to have that enabled so you can either disable or enable that right here you also have reduced white point you have inversions like smart invert and classic invert you have differentiate without color, increase contrast, reduce transparency, a lot of just display features in here. You should definitely at least look at and see what you want to configure. But of course, the main thing in here is going to be auto brightness. The next thing you guys should do is test out the new LiDAR sensor with some augmented reality applications. So as you guys know, the LiDAR sensor is a brand new sensor on the iPad Pro 2020. It's the first one of any Apple product and you should go ahead and take advantage of that. So if we go into our app store right here and go to app, 
and then go all the way down to categories and then go to see all. You can see we have AR applications up here in the top left and this will take you to a big page where you can see a ton of different AR applications to choose from and they are categorized as well. You can see learn with AR, remodel with AR, shop with AR and just more AR to explore. Some of my personal favorites are I like the IKEA place application. iScape is a great one for landscaping. So if you wanted to see like how trees or how shrubs or how flowers or how pavers would look in your yard front or back you can use iScape to get a good view of that AR magic is a great AR application to show you like magic tricks in AR it's pretty cool there's just a lot to explore with AR we're still in the infancy stage of this and I think the lidar sensor is just a great addition to Apple products and I think once again we're going to be hearing a lot more about this this is also going to be on the new iPhones this lidar scanner is so just take advantage of it test it out see what you think about it even if you don't like AR at least just test it out just so you could see pretty much the most compelling feature of this 2020 iPad Pro. The next thing you guys should do is at least just know about external hard drive support. So you can hook up an external hard drive to your iPad Pro itself and be able to transfer files back and forth from your hard drive to the iPad via the files application. This is super, super useful if you have a lot of documents you need to sign and you know transfer to a hard drive or whatever the case may be. This is just a very, very awesome feature that once again, makes this pretty much a laptop replacement at this point. And speaking of hooking things up, you should also hook up your PS4 or Xbox controller via Bluetooth to play games via the controller. So if you have a PS4, controller right here you can go ahead and pair it by simply going to the share button right there hold share and the ps button together at the same time until you see the light up top make this little flashing indicator right there just like so and then if you go into your settings and go to bluetooth right here you will see the dualshock 4 show up down at the bottom there it is just go ahead and connect just like so. And then you can actually play games with this. So you could play things like PUBG or Fortnite or Call of Duty. Actually, I don't think you can with PUBG, but you definitely can on Call of Duty and Fortnite and Real Racing. A lot of the applications you can actually use controllers on and it just makes life so much easier. I actually felt like I was cheating when I was playing Fortnite at first with the controller here playing against other mobile players. Of course, some of them do have controllers too, but it's just a great way to play games on the iPad, especially because you can have it sitting away from you and you know, kind of sit back and play it like you're playing on a console. So definitely go ahead and check that out. At least know about that as a feature with your new iPad Pro. The next thing you guys wanna do is install applications. So this may seem like an obvious one, but a lot of people forget about this and just don't install as many applications as they should. This iPad Pro can handle everything you pretty much throw at it. So go ahead and install all your productivity applications like Photoshop Express, Adobe Draw, Google Docs, Google Sheets, things like that. Just go ahead and install everything from the App Store right here as well. Also games, you have a whole section down here for games. I do also like Apple Arcade if you do want to spend a little bit of money, $5 a month to get access to a ton of games. I would highly recommend looking into this. I don't think it's worth it for the iPhones, but for the iPad, I think it's definitely worth it. And you should always check out the Today tab right here as well, because there are always things up here that are updated every single day. You get a lot of information and a lot of, I've learned about a lot of applications from this tab here. So definitely check that out. Also, if you want to install updates, just click on your profile picture right here, and then you will see updates right here show up if you do have any updates. Now, after you install a lot of applications, of course, you will want to customize your home screen and your dock. So. This is easier to move with a trackpad or mouse. It's easier to move around applications and things like that. So I'll, I'll just show you with the trackpad here real quick. So if you go ahead to an application, you can see you could just click on it and move it around just like so. It makes moving applications really, really easy here on the iPad. So once again, you can just click it and move it. it. makes it a lot easier. Of course, you can do that with your finger as well, but it does take a little bit of you know, holding it for a second and then moving it. But anyways, you also wanna go into your settings right here and then go down to home screen and dock. And from here, you can actually change the layout of the home screen. So you can see a little animation there if you want more applications or if you just want bigger applications. So as you can see, this is more, I have the today view right there. But if you go back and go to bigger and go back to the home screen, as you can see, we have a much bigger grid layout here. That today view is gone unless we go ahead and swipe over like that. So I personally prefer more, but you should go ahead and mess around with this and see which one you like. You could also have the today view on or off. So if you go back, you can see it will not show by default. 
you have to slide slide over to see it. So you can go ahead and change that if you want to as well. I like having mine pinned there on the home screen. You also have show suggested and recent apps and doc. So this is these icons right here. It will show some recent applications right there. If you don't want that enabled, you can go ahead and disable that and it will just show what you have in the doc and only what you have in the doc. I like having this enabled though because sometimes it does give you access to applications a lot easier. But yeah, just customize everything on your home screen. Of course, you can move multiple applications as well. If you go ahead and drag like this and then just tap on another, you can move all these to a different page or into a folder or whatever you want. So just customize your home screen to your liking. And speaking of customizing things, you also want to customize the control center right here, the toggles in here. You can actually customize these. So if you go into our settings and then go up to control center right here, and then customize controls. You can see we have all these right here that you can change and drag and move to different positions like so. So I like having screen recording and dark mode for sure in here. I do also like having these like even. So if you just put a random one in there, you can see it will make it kind of odd where you have like one down here and it's not very symmetrical. So I like to have it an even number right there, but just take a look through these and go ahead and add whatever ones you want and move around whatever ones you want inside the control center here so that you have access to things that you use often. And speaking of things you can customize, you also want to customize the widgets panel over here. So you can see all your widgets right here. That's also on the today view. If you go to your today view and swipe down, you can see you have all these widgets right here. You can customize these either by going to this and going to edit. And then from here, you also have the option to turn on or off the today view. But from here, you can have pinned favorites. So you can have up to three pinned favorites on the today view. You can change these to whatever you would like. And then you also have favorites right here. So these are things that you're probably gonna use pretty often. I do have calculator. This is something I should have mentioned in my apps to download. I would definitely recommend having a calculator on your iPad because for some reason we still don't have a built-in calculator in 2020. So pretty crazy. But anyways, yeah. So if we go back to this right here and go to edit, as you can see, there's just a lot of things, a lot of different widgets you can add to the today view for quick and easy access. Just go ahead and check this out and add some things on there if you want to. And once you start installing other applications, those will show up in the widgets panel as well. The next thing you guys want to do is consider purchasing iCloud storage. So if you go to your little icon right here, your profile right here, and then go to iCloud and then go to manage storage. From here, you can change your storage plan and you can upgrade your storage plan. Now, I would recommend buying iCloud storage for backups, for document storage, and things like that. That way you can download movies and games and other things that take up a lot of space on the iPad itself. So of course it's pretty cheap. Mine is $10 a month just because I have a lot of data, a lot of backups, but you can see it starts as cheap as 99 cents per month. As you can see there, 50 gigabytes is 99 cents per month, 299 for 200 gigabytes. Honestly, 50 gigabytes should be enough for plenty of people if you just have documents and things like that on your iCloud. Of course, if you have a lot of iPhones and stuff like that, or a lot of photos and videos that you put on here, you will probably need to up that, but at least consider buying some iCloud storage that way you can download other things on your iPad without ever having to worry about the storage. And the final thing you guys should do is consider buying a keyboard case or at the very least a smart folio case like I have here. It connects magnetically. As you can see, it'll just drop in like that and you can shut it and that will lock the iPad. And when you open it up, it will unlock your iPad. It's very convenient. It also protects the screen. So you really don't need a screen protector if you have a case like this. So I would definitely recommend getting one of these. As you can see here, this was made for the 2018 iPad Pro, but it still somewhat works for the most part. The magnets still work and everything like that. But also keep in mind that the brand new Magic Keyboard is coming out in a couple of months, which I will be getting here on the channel and covering in depth on the channel. So stay tuned for that. Smart Keyboard is going to have the keyboard and the trackpad built in. It's it starts at 300 bucks, so it is pretty expensive, but you can hold out for that if you want to. So anyways, guys, there you have it. Those are the first 15, probably a lot more than 15, things that you should do on your brand new 2020 iPad Pro. I think you guys are going to absolutely love this iPad, especially if you did not have the 2018 iPad Pro. This thing is a beast at playing games with the new trackpad support. Everything is just awesome with this iPad. And I definitely can't wait to try out that LiDAR sensor some more with AR apps and things like that. I may make an updated video on that if you guys want me to. Let me know if you want any kind of videos, if you have any suggestions or recommendations for videos on the channel. Be sure to leave me a comment down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, I would also appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it, learned something, or if you just enjoyed the sound of my voice, I would appreciate that thumbs up. And of course, a subscribe and click that bell notification if you guys want to be notified when I post new videos. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.